Jai Prabhuti. Hi everyone, welcome back to another lecture of commentaries on Prabhuji video lectures. And today the subject we will speak about is very connected to the last lecture we commented about, which was the lecture uh, named Waiting with Open Doors, where we mentioned that most people find themselves on this endless linear line of running after pleasure and escaping suffering, or running after what they like and escaping what they don't like. But eventually, they find themselves being managed by life rather than managing their lives. And in most cases, it even happens without paying attention to the fact that this is what is actually going on. Now, we also mentioned last time that in many cases, this situation that people find themselves in leads them to search for religious life or spiritual life, which are not necessarily the same. And we're not going to comment on it at this moment, but it's important to remember. Now, the lecture we are going to talk about today, even the name of it brings us to the subject of the spiritual search. And most important, why do I search for God or spirituality? And we are confronted with a statement in the lecture's name, nonetheless, that God is not a solution, which bring us directly to the question, why and how am I in the path that I'm in or on? Do I see God as a solution to my problems? Do I see God's spiritual life to escape from something I see as a problem? Because if we have a solution, it means there is a problem or a question or uncertainty, isn't it? Otherwise, why do I need a solution? Now, with a name like this, uh, we would maybe be inclined to think that the lecture will speak about the way people misuse religion or spirituality or God, and the attention will be sent out there, away from us, away from me. But no, and this is an important point when we are listening or trying to understand Prabhuji's lectures or writing. It is always, no matter what, always about self-examination, about getting to know the seeker better, Never about the other, never about there, always about here, never about him or her, but always about me. So straight away, we have a 180 degree turn that brings the attention to us, to me. Even just with the name of the lecture, we are already in a place we maybe didn't think we will be in, examining ourselves. Why do we search? What do we really want? And why do we want what we want? In this lecture, Prabhuji is taking us on a journey that passes through a few points in regards to the search. And Prabhuji starts the lecture with a verse from the Ishavasya Upanishad. Yastu sarvani bhutani atmani evanu pashyati sarvabhuteshu chatmanam tattuna vijugupsate he who sees everything and everyone only in the self alone and sees the self in everything and everyone does not hate anything or anyone. In this opportunity, I want to pay attention to this sentence. Does not hate anything or anyone. So, as we heard, Prabhuji is concentrating on the part of the verse that says, does not hate anything or anyone. After that, the lecture starts with Prabhuji saying that what we are today is a result of choices we made in the past. 
And what we choose today will affect what we will be in the future. So our choices are very important. And he keeps on saying that more important than that is which basis, on which basis we choose. What is the motivation we base our choices on? Now, we mentioned a few moments ago that most people find themselves on this linear line of escaping discomfort or suffering and running after pleasure. And the word find indicates that it is not a state that people create out of awareness. It means no awareness to the process that got us to where we are. And no awareness on the basis of which we make those choices. But even though we find ourselves in that situation, it doesn't mean that we didn't make it happen that we are not responsible for getting to this or any state we find ourselves in. Our choices are important because they do influence who or what we are in this world. Now, since we are talking about our choices and actions, I would like us to visit a little uh, the subject of the law of karma that we find within the wisdom of the past of karma yoga. In his book, Yoga Union with Reality, Prabhuji breaks down and writes about all the different paths of yoga, which there's quite a few of them. And one of them is, of course, Karma Yoga. Now, Karma Yoga is the path of selfless action, or as Prabhuji writes, Karma Yoga is the art of transforming our automatic reaction into conscious actions, and thus our karma into yoga. So karma is action and yoga is union. And in this chapter, Prabhuji explains about the path that teaches us how to engage correctly in the world. Because even someone who wants to transcend the world in the spiritual path needs to do it while in the world. And as Prabhuji writes, it is not escapism. It's about to know and learn how to act in the world and to be in the world, but not to belong to it, or to let it be in you. In the path of Karma Yoga, we learn about the law of karma, which is a very important knowledge. And in this section about the law of karma, Prabhuji writes, the law of karma is the law of cause, cause and effect, or the law of causation. Each cause creates an equal intense effect in the opposite direction, which returns to the originator or the source of the action. The Vedic wisdom affirms that the entire universe is under the control of this infallible and absolute law from which it is impossible to escape. What we have here is a very important piece of information. Even if we only concentrate on this sentence, what it is telling us is, as this famous phrase says, the buck stops here. We are responsible for everything that happens to us, which means that we have a much bigger say in every aspect of our lives and or its outcome than we may be thought or were aware of. And since we are talking about the law of karma, it also means not only in this life, but the life to come will be determined by our, our current actions. As our current life was determined by our actions in our past lives. Not only that, but it tells us that we are not uh, victims of our lives. It opens to us the door to conscious action, which in turn makes us aware that to, there is a separation between the action and the doer. We have all the option to oversee our life. It's in our hands. What we need to do is to learn how to act. We must learn how to act in harmony with Dharma. But this is something that is frightening to many people because it demands from us much more than what we may have wanted or expected. Knowledge and awareness are obligating. 
In almost every Upanishadic story where teaching or wisdom is about to be imparted from master to his disciples, or anyone who asks a question about spiritual subject, the first thing that happens before anything else are different type of tests that the disciple or whomever asked the question needs to go through. Whether it is King Janaka and Yanyavalkya, Nachiketa and Yamaraj, Lord, Lord of Death, or even Lord Indra, that had to be a disciple of Prajapati for 12 years before he was able to ask the first question. And many more examples like that. So what is he telling us? He tells us that the spiritual knowledge is the highest of all types of knowledge. It is existential and it will change your life forever. It's priceless. It is not to be given lightly and shouldn't be taken lightly. And we must ask ourselves, are we ready for this type of knowledge? In all aspects, do we really want God or enlightenment, the ultimate truth? When Prabhuji at the start of the lecture speaks about the choices we make, he says the following. So what you choose, it is very important. But more than that is on which basis you choose. What is your motivation to choose? And Prabhuji tells us what we mentioned at the start of our talk today, that we are always moving on this one line. We make choices on the basis of what we like or we don't like. That's it. Life is an ocean of opportunities. Existence offered in front of us infinite alternatives and we can choose. But we live our lives walking in one direction, only one direction. If we will go back to what we said a few moments ago, that according to the law of karma, our choices, past and present, are what brought us to where we are. And out of all the options that may be open to us, as we just heard, we stay on this linear line. It's an interesting point, no? Why? It seems that the fact that we do have a choice opens a door to the unknown. And for the egoic phenomenon, or us, or who we think that we are, there is nothing scarier than the unknown. So we stay within the realms of what we think we know. And what we think is that if we will chase after what we like, we will be happy. So we stay on this linear line of chasing after what we like and escaping what we don't like because it is the familiar, it's comfortable, it's the devil we know. The unknown is scary. The unknown demands for me to be present in every moment. It demands awareness and we are not used to it. It requires that I will be in full awareness to, the, uh, to such an extent that I will become a watcher and will be able to step out of this line and watch it and not take part in it, but will make a different choice, which is to act according to Dharma, act according to what is right and beneficiary, but not necessarily what I like or what is pleasant. And please note that I'm saying act and not react. And we will get to this point shortly. Um, to the subject of action versus reaction. And this state of being, of chasing what we like and escaping what we don't like, what we are not aware of, as Prabhuji say in this lecture, we don't pay attention or see that it makes us conditioned. 
this state takes away our freedom to choose. And then Prabhuji brings up a very interesting direction to look at this issue of the search and what we are searching for. He says that this movement between Raga and Dwesha of attraction and aversion is not like what people think. People think they are pursuing happiness, love, richness, and so on. But no, what they are doing is escaping suffering. That is all. And when you escape something, you will always have some of what you escape from with you. In the solution, you will always have something from the problem. Escaping from the problems cannot lead us to truth, to reality. If a slave wants to go out of slavery and want freedom, that freedom is not real freedom. It's not absolute freedom. The freedom that the slavery look after is nothing else but a reaction to slavery. It's a solution to his slavery and that kind of freedom will have something of the slavery in it. If you go deep into the freedom of the slave, you will find something of the slavery, something of the chains. So as we heard, this kind of freedom is a reaction to slavery and therefore is still connected to slavery. Whenever there is a reaction, the cause is always present. And here we are going back to what we said before about action versus reaction. Action has no doer, reaction has a doer, who wants to benefit of his or hers action. Actions frees you, reaction binds you. In Prabhuji's writing about Karma Yoga, we read further. Karma Yoga is that wisdom that allows us to act without becoming bound or fettered by the action. It teaches us the delicate art of turning action into a tool that liberates rather than enslaves. Karma Yoga is the art of transforming our automatic reactions into conscious action and thus our karma into yoga. When we react to slavery, and Prabhuji says it clearly in the lecture, it is not pure freedom. And Prabhuji brings a few more examples besides freedom, that the same goes in the case of searching for love, in searching not to be alone, to be happy, and so on. Most people, when they search, they don't search, they escape. So their search is a reaction. Like freedom is not to be not to be a slave. And love is much more than not to be alone. Happiness doesn't mean not to suffer. For me, Prabhuji here brings back to the, word, to the words love, freedom, happiness, their lost meaning and use. These words are being uh, used carelessly in many cases and, many, and maybe even more so in the realm of the spiritual seekers. It sounds good. I look for real love, for freedom, for happiness. But did we really stop to check the deep meaning of these words, especially as seekers of the truth or God or enlightenment? And Prabhuji reminds us here that love is much more than not being alone, and happiness does not mean not to suffer. So the question of our action and what is behind them, the motivation of our actions, rise again. Why do I do what I do? And this is, in my opinion, a super important point when we ask ourselves, why do I search for God? 
enlightenment, spiritual life, call it what you may. And then comes another important point that again changes totally the direction of our attention or point of view. They don't like illusion. They escape from Maya, try to escape from the ego to the shelter, to the solution that is God, consciousness, Brahman, call it as the self, whatever you want. But with this attitude of Raga and Dvesha, it is problematic. First of all, for the simple reason that ego, illusion, maya, doesn't mean you have a problem. But it means that you are a problem. And here we have it. Prabhuji declares here, not that we have a problem, we are the problem. And if we are not sure why it's important to understand that we are the problem, Prabhuji is telling us further. When you are the problem, that means your problem is subjective. Ego, maya, illusion means you are a problem. That means your problem is subjective. And Every solution is objective. Every solution is mechanic. That means every solution comes from the externals, from the surface, from outside. It's applied to you from the outside, from the external world. Which means that there really there is nothing we can do to solve the problem. The only thing is to disappear, and who wants to disappear? And it's as Prabhuji said once that we must understand the spiritual quest is really a spiritual suicide. And until we understand that enlightenment, God, will never happen to me, we will never be able to advance on the path. And not less important is that God is not a solution because you are God. You are that. And when you will not be, God enlightenment will appear because it is not an objective problem. As we heard Prabhuji a moment ago, it is a subjective issue. I am the problem. And here I would like to bring about this point something that Prabhuji wrote in a new book named I Am What I Am. Just as darkness is nothing more than an absence of light, the egoic entity is mere ignorance of ourselves. The ego reveals itself as the shadow cast by our own ignorance. It is impossible to shatter, demolish, destroy, or renounce the non-existing ego without falling into perpetual cycle of self-deception. New egoic manifestation will arise in the attempt, such as false humility, feigned liberation, or a disgust of erudition, which are nothing more than new forms of ignorance. It is futile to fight the darkness or the egoic phenomenon. We cannot expel darkness, but only turn on the light. Just as darkness is dispelled by light, the ego dismantled by self-knowledge. So here we have it. Self-knowledge is the solution. And here we meet the path of Advaita Vedanta and its practical aspect, Jnana Yoga. Advaita Vedanta is one of the six orthodox darshanas within Hinduism, and it's the path of non-dual Vedanta. And Jnana Yoga is the path of knowledge. Now the word Jnana means knowledge, and in his book, Advaita Vedanta, Prabhuji writes about Jnana Yoga. Jnana Yoga is considered a destructive path since it destroys our habitual cognitive state of subject-object. It encourages us to question the source of our existence. Its basic 
teaching is that our true nature is divine. It is the ultimate reality that lies in the depth of every living being. As an egoic entity, you are an illusion. An unreal being cannot aspire to be authentic. Truth can only be revealed in a moment free of what is known, of memory, of past. You cannot search, reach, achieve, or know the truth. You can only be it. Suddenly, you become aware that you are what you aspire to. Clearly, you cannot find the truth by searching for it. But without searching for it, you will never find it. We will not get now into explaining the path of Advaita Vedanta or Jnana Yoga. It's a very large subject. You are invited to see the lecture of our dear Indra Devi and Swami Omkarananda about the book Advaita Vedanta of Prabhuji. As I mentioned at the start of the lecture, Prabhuji takes us on a journey in this talk. And at the end of the lecture, Prabhuji gives, up, gives us a tip. If you are a real seeker of truth, looking for reality, Never see truth, reality, as the solution to your problems. And then Prabhuji goes back to the end of the verse of the Ishavasya Upanishad. Does not hate anything or anyone. The one who is awake is beyond these chains of attachments and rejections, like and doesn't like. So I think we got quite a lot in this lecture of Prabhuji in our examination of it. For me, it is a real invitation for self, uh, self-exploration, to ask ourselves the important question that are maybe not very pleasant to ask and check, but that lead us towards the truth. And it is something we need to consider And as we asked during this lecture, are we ready for this knowledge that comes with the destruction of what we think that we are and what we believe ourselves to be? This knowledge that destroys the seeker starts with a seemingly simple question. Do I see God as a solution? Now, I don't know if it is intentional or just because of saying the things as they are, as Prabhuji presented them in the lecture. For me, this lecture brings back the lost dignity or the lost meaning of a lot of the words we use during the lecture and of the spiritual search. I mean from the aspect that God, spirituality, enlightenment, self-exploration, the search, karma, yoga, and so on, are words that became a commercialized tool for self-promotion for different people. And it is very sad. If we really dive into the wisdom behind this subject, it's incredible. This path, whether it is karma yoga, we mentioned briefly, Vedanta, Jnana yoga, enlightenment, self-realization, that's what they are all about nothing else, to realize our true nature. That is all they are about. Thank you and Jai Prabhuji.